Did you catch that? Now, I'm not referring to the fireball that's exiting out of that muzzle. I'm referring to the barrel whip, to the vibration that we're seeing all along that barrel. Let's go ahead and run that clip once again a little bit slower and pay attention to the barrel itself. Do you see that vibration moving along the barrel? Now, a lot of that vibration is actually happening well after the bullet has left the muzzle. That's true. But that vibration starts the moment that the primer explodes and the powder starts burning. And it builds and it continues on as both the bullet travels along the bore or through the bore as well as the acceleration of those gases down the bore. And those vibrations, oscillations, resonance, whatever you like to call it, can affect where that bullet strikes on the target. Hey, welcome to this season, a brand new season of Extreme Reloading. And what we're doing this season, I'm calling nodes, necks, and sills. So we're going to start this season focusing on the nodes, and in particular, harmonic nodes. Those vibrations that we just talked about do affect our bullet's impact on the target. Now some of these factors are also the factors associated with recoil, in particular the acceleration of the bullet down the bore and the acceleration of the hot gases down the bore. And while most of recoil really occurs after the bullet has exited the muzzle, uh, there is some effective recoil prior to the bullet's exit. But what's more important is those vibrations and oscillations that are occurring along the barrel. And I think what we need to understand is that those vibrations are not just an up and down, but they are in all directions, yes, principally up and down, but at the same time that barrel can move, matters on the barrel, but it can move in a circular fashion or even an oblong fashion. Now if that barrel is moving erratically or unpredictably when the bullet exits the muzzle, well then our bullet impact on the target is also going to look pretty erratic. However, if the barrel's movement can be predicted consistently, then the impact of our bullet on the target will also be consistent. And it goes back to the old adage that consistency equals accuracy. So how can we predict or manage vibration? Well, one way is to use a very rigid bull barrel. In fact, sometimes the barrels are so rigid or stiff that vibration is pretty much negligible. That normally doesn't happen, but it certainly is possible. However, if you've got a favorite rifle, a rifle that you've set up and, and it's working overall pretty darn well for you, buying a brand new rifle with a bull barrel may not be really an option. And adding that extra weight of a bull barrel may not be welcome either. But we can still manage that vibration by mapping the harmonics in that particular barrel or for that particular barrel. And really, we're going to let the bullet tell us all about the harmonics. So we'll begin by choosing all of our components that we're going to be loading. And I mean right down to the primer, the case that we're going to be using, the powder that we're going to be using and we want to use, and the bullet. Once we've made all of those selections, we're going to begin working up a brand new load, starting at the minimum charge and increasing that charge by 0.2 or sometimes 0.3 grain increments. When we're loading up smaller caliber rounds, typically like a 5.56, 220 Swift, those sorts of things, we'll increment by two-tenths of a grain. 
Once we step it up to 270, the 7 millimeters, 30 cals, we'll go to about 3 tenths of a grain. And as you go larger than that, you may even uh, go to you know, 0.4 or 0.5 grain increments. But regardless on the increments that you use, the process is really always the same. We're going to end up with a handful of rounds that we need to fire, and we need to fire those in order. Lowest charge first, all the way up to the maximum charge. Uh, and this, of course, is done for safety, but also because we need to be very systematic in how we're going to watch the impact of those rounds on target. We're going to want to shoot with the exact same point of aim and then fire round one, return to the exact same point of aim, round two, round three, and so on and so forth. You're still going to want to watch for pressure signs, uh, especially if this is a brand new load that you're working up. And what I like to do is I like to take a camera, put it on a tripod, place it out there close to my target, and just let it record where those rounds are impacting. Now you might have a really nice spotting scope available, and you'll be able to then see where those rounds are impacting. But as you stretch out the range at which you're shooting at, uh, you may not be absolutely certain where that round has impacted, especially if they start forming little groups, those little clusters. And those are important that we be able to detect these. So I really recommend putting a camera out there and just let it record during your entire uh, shot string. And we're going to want to do this, if at all possible, at a little bit longer range, not 100 yards, but 200 yards, or if you can, maybe 300 yards. You got to know your limits, because as you stretch out that range too far, then you might start inserting some shooter error, which then kind of blows the whole thing. So shoot at the longest range where you feel really comfortable, and of course, you're going to want to shoot off a bench or a nice solid support. Now once we've completed our shot string, we need to analyze the target. Yes, I normally still like to run a chronograph at the same time, give me a little bit more information, a little bit more data behind my shot strings, but we're not going to analyze the chronograph like we do for optimal charge weight. Rather, we're going to really focus our attention on the target itself and the point of impact of those, of those different rounds. Now, ideally and theoretically, our first round is going to have the slowest velocity as the lightest powder charge, and it's going to impact lowest. And then as each charge increases, the velocity increases, and we're going to step up the ladder. That's why it's called the ladder effect or ladder approach. In practice, however, we oftentimes don't see a perfect ladder type of appearance. Uh, some rounds might fly a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, whatever. Uh, some rounds might, for some reason, fly very high. Other rounds, they sh flow, uh, fly and impact much lower. And this is actually telling us quite a bit about the barrel harmonics. The anti-nodes, uh, especially a high anti-node, would tend to throw the uh, bullet impact quite high. If we're on the opposite end of the anti-node, the bottom side of the trough of that wave, well then that bullet is most likely going to impact quite a bit lower. The barrel oscillations might cause that round to go a little bit left or a little bit right. That's what we see in practice, but in reality, or rather in theory, we like to think about this nice ladder approach. That's what we'd like to see. But no matter what we do see, what we're really searching for is two or hopefully three rounds that impact very close to one another, start to form a cluster or start to form a nice little group. We might see our load workup start to cluster nice together, two, maybe three rounds, and then the next round just flies off somewhere. Well, what we've done is we've identified a node right there where they've clustered, where they grouped, and then we moved into 
another anti-node. We want to avoid those and focus on the nodes. If you shoot enough rounds in your string, you might see two or maybe even three nodes or groups, clusters that we can then work with. Now in precision reloading or hand loading, we really recognize two different types of nodes. One is the harmonic node that we've just been discussing. The other is a velocity node, or what I've referred to as the optimal charge weight node, also called a SIL, statistically considered a SIL. Is a velocity node and a harmonic node the exact same thing? No, oftentimes it's not. Sometimes it might be. But what I've seen is that there's oftentimes a slight difference, two-tenths of a grain, three-tenths of a grain, whatever, uh, difference between our harmonic node and our velocity node. Which node is better? Well, I'll say the node that is better is the one that gives you a higher precision. And precision, recall, is the extreme spread of your, let's say, five-shot group. So here's our experiment. I've chosen some very high quality primers. I'll be using Federal Gold Medal Match Large Rifle Primers in ADG Brass. And this ADG Brass is consistent to begin with, but I've also improved the consistency by weight sorting all of that brass. I'll be using RL15 as my powder and Sierra tipped match king bullets in 168 grains. And I've gone a step further, a little bit extreme again, on my bullet selection. I've actually weight sorted my bullets. And we will actually be using 168.2 grain bullets all the way through our harmonic node testing. So I'll be working up my load to identify the harmonic node or nodes. I'll also probably be able to identify the optimal charge weight sill or velocity node. And then we're going to put all those side by side and compare them head to head. Which one works better? Harmonic node or velocity node? Now, whichever one works better is the answer for my particular bullet, but don't think that it's the end all for everything and you can then say oh forget all about optimal charge weight or forget all about harmonic node testing now and that's just going to be the result that I found for my particular rifle but if you follow the same procedure you'll be able to find a very precise load for your rifle with not a whole lot of effort in fact you can probably do it for with about 20 maybe 30 rounds in total and then just for the fun of it, and because this is extreme reloading, I'm going to repeat the entire process with 556. And in this case, it truly is a brand new load workup because I've got my hands on some Ramshot Tech powder. And I'll be using Federal Brass with Federal AR Match Primers and Barnes match burner bullets. So in the coming weeks, we're going to be testing the 308 Winchester and the 556 to see what we can learn about harmonic node and velocity nodes. I hope you'll be tuning in and enjoying another season of extreme reloading.